Let's talk about so. what you're going to be, uh, what shows you're competing in. How far out are we? Well, the first one for sure, it's a early June, maybe the second Saturday of June 2013. Okay. It's in the, the one at Folsom. Okay. The next one is the, uh, the Chris Jones versus Huggins one. Okay. Uh, July 13th, 2013, Muscle Mayhem. Okay. And we're, we're, we're looking to, we're looking to create a frozen routine. I love to, yeah. What, so what do you good. want to display with this kind of frozen routine? I definitely want to <clears throat> hit some of the better shots that aren't mandatory poses. So get some really great uh, stills, also really great footage of me hitting non-mandatory poses. Right. And also show my strong points, you know. Right. Uh, and also just really make a good pose routine that people are going to like to watch. Okay. Entertainment. So. What about um, music? Let's get an idea uh, of what we like for music. I like everything, to be honest. Everything. Trance music. What did you post last music. time? I I posed to a it's like a famous YouTube song. Okay. Other than that, people don't really know it mainstream because okay. it's just a YouTube song. Will you be doing that again, or will you be using? I don't know. It's it's iffy because I do like uh, online songs that are royalty free okay. in some ways because it's easier to get online. In, in some mainstream songs, it, sometimes they get blocked. Right. So that's just one small thing. Right. So I might lean towards. Royalty free song, to be honest. Okay. So. Okay. And let's talk about how many, how many shows have you competed in? Done three so far. Were they the same posing routine for each? It was a different one for each. A different posing routine well, for each? It was definitely a different one for the first, but then the, the second and the third, the, it was the same posing routine, but halfway through the first, or halfway through the second show, I forgot the routine. So I freestyled it. But on the last time, I got it right, I think. Okay. And. How much time did you put in for each of those Ooh. routines? <laughs> the, the first show, uh, we did it backstage. We put Back. together backstage. <laughs> it was the most stressful hour of my life. Okay. Me and my girlfriend, we were like freaking out, just creating stuff in, in a mirror. Uh, the second one, I, I went to uh, Jeff Albert's house. We, we probably spent an hour on it. Okay. And then, uh, and then the last one, we, we put it together. We spent uh, a good four or five, six hours. Okay. And uh, I practiced it quite a bit. Okay. So. Okay. Good deal. Because we're looking at spending multiple hours, and more importantly, over the duration yeah. of a long amount of time. Because that's how you get comfortable um, with the posing. We'll be breaking up the music in the segments. We'll be fitting poses into those segments, and then further uh, going deeper into it and making transitions that fit those poses. So it's going to be a little more in depth. Uh, I just want to make sure that I make it clear. Um, not every. Not there's not one right way. To do everything right this so, is me trying to help you with the knowledge i have what i've used over the years um, to create routines that i've created um, routines that people enjoy people love and more importantly i feel satis uh, satisfied with and i'm happy with them i want to make sure you're comfortable enough because um, the pose, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be we're going to be going a little bit outside of the box with our posing we're going to be um doing poses that not many people are going to hit you look at who the people who are going to be uh, competing against you, they're going to be hitting mandatory poses, guaranteed. You know, and that's what most posing routines consist of nowadays. Is mandatories with mandatory little to no mandatory, mandatory after mandatory with little to no transitions at all, okay. um, and a song choice that does not match the mandatories. Um, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, I made a post about it recently. You need to match the intensity of the song choice, um, and nobody thinks about that. And so it's going to be really sure. important for us to pick the right type of music pick the right poses and the right transitions that are going to go with that. So let's take a look. We're going to go over here, use a mirror. Um, we'll be doing stuff without the mirror later. But I want, to, I, want to kind of, I want to kind of take a look at you and see how confident you are in your poses. Um, so obviously you, don't, you know the mandatories, right? Yeah. I think okay. So what I want to have you do, and just hear me out here, I'm going to have you hit a mandatory pose. And then I'm going to have you alter few things um, on your own free will. I'm going to have you choose to do it. And I want to see what happens. I want to see how you can alter that pose um, to make it <laughs> completely different. Make it different okay. than the pose it started out being. That's awesome. And now change a few things. Let's, let's change a couple of things here. Let's change the angles of your arm and let's change the foot placement and see if you can make the pose look any different. Any different? Yes. Okay, see, there we go. Perfect, I like that. Small change. So you move this one up, angle stayed the same, open it up a little bit here just to change something. 
Okay, and let's do the same with the front lat spread. This is gonna be difficult. Hit the okay. front lat spread. So regular? Yeah, so hit the front lat spread regular, and let's go ahead and change it. Okay. Good, and now what would you do to change that? That's gonna be a little bit difficult. To change it? <laughs> to change it to something else. I'd have to hit some sort of crazy thing, so. I'm trying to be creative here. So we'll just stop. <laughs> what can you do with the front with the front lat spread? Something like something like this. Okay. Now what if now what if you were to take uh, what if you were to take this side and do something yeah. different while this side is still flaring the lat out? Okay. So All right. So flare the lat out and then take the other arm and there, there we go. Something like that. Or even you could even uh, off to the side, straight arm it down, uh, maybe open it up. Something different, okay, there we go. I mean, we're just looking at something different. And your feet are the same, but that's okay. Okay, we're working on one part at a time. I like that, opening it up. Okay, yeah, because the full chest looks good. Let's take let's take a look at the, um, there we, hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Mark? That's, cha that's changing it, that's perfect, I like that. Hi. Let's take a side pose, go straight to your side chest. Side hit chest. it hard, yeah, hit it hard. Good. This one's easy to change. Do anything to this one. Yeah, you can just go like this. This one's easy to change. This. How about you take this, turn it to a, um, a straight arm with your right arm, closer to the judges. There you go. Good. And why don't you take your uh, arm, arm furthest and put it into a bicep. Try a little something different. There we go. Keep this one straight. Full. There we go. Good. And now put it back into the side, uh, side chest. Good, relax for about five seconds and then we'll hit the side tricep and then we'll take it from there as well. Okay. Yeah. This is my bad side. <laughs> Not that flexible. Yeah, and then what can you do to that? Now um, for, for a pose like this, what I would personally suggest is, I know we're working on what you're gonna think of, but I, I, what I would do is I would take that leg and I would open it up and I will flare my quads, okay? So that's what I would do personally, because you can still shoot with the tricep, you still get a shot with the tricep, right? Now you're just playing your abs more, and now all of a sudden you've opened up and you've got these quads showing. So it's a little bit uh, something that you would see in old school 60s, 70s bodybuilders it's looking at a pose like that, like Serge Nebray almost. Um, but that's good, I like that. Let's take it to the back, let's go for a back double bicep. This one should be easy to change as well. Good, hold it, hold it, hold it. Good, and change it. Hey, there we go, awesome. Let's do something different with your feet. Let's try something different with your foot. Okay, there we go, look at the blue back. There we go, look at No, no, that was good. Perfect, and I see how you do it. Like a chick, I'm just. <laughs> Popping your foot up. No, that's good, perfect. For the left, I'll go for back lat. Okay, change it. There we go. Or. Okay, change the position. There we go, perfect. Again, we're just trying to get creative here. Perfect, relax for a second, good. Let's go ahead and hit the, um, we'll go to the front and we'll do the ab and thigh and we'll do most muscular. Okay, okay so let's hit the ab and thigh. And this one's gonna be, I mean, you can manipulate this in any way possible, or this one should be easy. Good, now what can you do different? Perfect. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one for you with the abs. I mean, you've got ab definition while you're bulking. I mean, you're around abs, so that's awesome. Good, now turn that into a most muscular. Do you do hands on hip or do you do grab? Do both. You do both. Okay, so let's take a look at hands on hip and change that. Good, now what can you do to that? Almost the same thing. Yeah, no, no, the foot for placement's different though. That makes a big difference. That's gonna make a big difference. Awesome. 
Awesome. Yeah, relax, relax. The whole point of this, again, we're just trying to get you comfortable doing things that you wouldn't normally do. Because everyone's going to go on stage, True. and you got a lineup of 15 guys. Everyone's going to hit the front double bicep, and that's what you get judged on. And, you know, I mean, 99% of the competitors, all they care about is winning. So if they want to win, they're going to perfect that pose. If you ask them to step outside of those boundaries, they're not going to look comfortable at all. True. You know, and so that's what we're looking to change here. We're looking to change that. Um, so what I want to what I want to do um, is I want to have you pose for sixty seconds. Straight. Sixty seconds. Straight. Oh God. And <laughs> we're gonna do this multiple. We're gonna do this a couple times. The first time, I just want to see what poses you do for sixty seconds straight. So I'm gonna get the timer out. We want to do sixty seconds. And again, this is coming down to getting comfortable with uh, with what you're doing. Okay, sixty seconds. Hit it. Sixty. You are at sixty now. Perfect. <laughs> Good. Okay. That's that's awesome. That's perfect. We're we're just we're just getting started here. The second time we do that in a couple minutes, I'm gonna have you doing it, um, and you're not gonna be allowed to hit any mandatory poses. Take your time. No hurry. Uh, okay. And let's see what you can create, and we'll go from there. All right. Let me get the timer out. Hit it. It's not one mandatory. Yeah, five seconds. Got it, relax. Okay. So, if I'm posing, just free posing, you know, just working on what looks good, um, I'll work off each pose. I will work off that pose, I'll change one thing, and then from that change, I'll change one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. And that's what makes things more fluid, transitions end up better, and you get more unique poses. So what will happen is, say if I start with, um, a front double bicep. Okay. Right. I'll change one thing, maybe the angle, the tilt here. All right, from that, what I'll do is I'll maybe change to here. So that's three different poses I just used, and I started with a front double bicep. Okay, and that was all changes with pretty much my upper body. My foot tilted a little bit, but that was it. So now I'm here. So from here, what am I gonna do? Maybe I'll open up my hand, I'll turn, and I'll display my tricep. That's gonna spike my toe, display my calf and hamstring, and I can go from here easily to this pose here. From there, I can drop my knee, and I can hit another one here. Okay, so one change at a time, all of a sudden I went from the front, now I'm displaying my back. I open up my back here, all right? And something creative, I open it up, I hit the, I hit the bicep pose, I turn again, and if I want to keep going for a 360, I could turn this way. If I want to display something differently, maybe grab my hip, boom. All right, open it up for the bicep, and I'll turn it around and I'll face the front again. So when I'm hitting my poses, I'm building off of each pose I hit. I might start with a mandatory, but I'm building it off of it, um, and I'm turning it into something completely different. And that's kind of how I, 
I make my poses more creative, I make the routines fluid, um, instead of thinking too hard. Because once you start doing it that way, you're gonna feel more natural. It's gonna feel like it's second nature. Just, oh, this pose looks good. You're dancing, let me change this. Oh yeah, exactly, let me change this, open this, see how this looks, as opposed to, well, I knew that looked good. What else looks good? <laughs> like you're thinking. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I love side tricep. You know what I mean? Let me hit this here. <laughs> Boom. Okay, and then I'll get, I can turn that into this, and then it's like, well, okay, I always wanted to hit a back, back last spread on stage. You know what I mean? So that's what it, you're, you're building off of each pose. So let's go ahead and build off each pose before we do uh, a round of posing that has no mandatories at all. With you. Okay. So go ahead and hit it, and we'll see what we can change. Okay, so now from that, let's go ahead and change the positioning of your foot. Okay, so maybe open it up more, go on your toe. And so bring it, yep, there we go, perfect, while you're still flexing. And while you do that, let's go ahead and bring this up. Let's open it up a little bit here. Beautiful, and go ahead and open up your hand. Open up, yeah, there we go. And when you open that one, let's clasp this one. Let's clasp it, yeah, clasp it hard. Good. So now from there, let's go ahead and transition that into, uh, let's take this arm and bring it down like you would for most muscular. Good. Okay, and we'll transition this arm down to match it and do another most muscular. Good. Perfect. Should we get Well, that, well what, what do you want to do from there? We could, we, could turn, we could change that into um, an ab pose. If you, if you want to go ahead and bring your foot closer, there we go, and you can display the quads, and you can turn it into an ab pose. There we go. And then from there, let's see what we can take that. Okay, if I'm in this pose with you, where can I take this? Okay, I say let's, let's, let's take this to the left. So let's go ahead and go ahead, make a transition this way. Okay, so now we'll end up with that. Yep, that cap is going to be spiked. Let's go ahead and display the tricep. Good. And then from there, we can even open it up just like what you were going for. Good. And now from there, why don't we suck it in for a side chest pose? Because now we're in this position and you've got a strong side chest pose. So yeah, suck the foot in too. Let's get the side chest pose. Perfect. And now we'll get a little more creative. We'll even drop down onto the right knee from there. And you can hit a bicep pose, display in the back like that. There we go. Perfect. And now we're down here. Now this is where it gets tricky. You can go ahead and relax with the upper body now. I'm going to talk to you down here. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because now we're completely out of your comfort zone. Now we're just like, yeah. well, where am I? I've never been before. Where am I? Exactly. What, what, what looks good, you know? And so you got to think about, okay, what's being displayed here? First and foremost, I've got hamstrings. Quads, calves that need to be thought about, yeah. Um, and that's gonna that's gonna hold true for both legs. Um, and you see how you just flatten your foot out there? Yeah. That was awesome. Okay, because it was here, and that you completely takes yeah. away from everything. The second you flatten it, now the pose flows more. So now we got to think about okay, this looks good. We've got roughly right angles here with my with my legs. What am I gonna do with my upper body? Okay, so that's what we got to think about. What do you think would look good? Take a look in that mirror. You go, you get a bicep pose, that actually looks uh, really good on you. Because that twist in the torso here is creating a taper that looks really good. So now all of a sudden, yes, that, and that, that's a pose, that looks good right there. That looks really good from the position I'm at and the angle I'm at, that looks good. That looks good. Okay, now what can we do from there though? Alright, so again, now we're thinking, uh, where do I go? And, you're, what, and what you're thinking is, now I want you to think about, where can my feet go? Because that's, that's where it gets complicated. You're like, well, I'm stationary here. All right, and I got this great pose. But where can I, what do I do with my feet? You know, what, what do I do? Yeah. Um, and there's so many things you could do. What I would do from here, take a look at this. Say if I have this pose, I got a back shot, and I want to open it up. I would put my weight on this far leg on my left and open it up. Now I'm facing, I have a whole new array of poses I could present to the crowd, and the transition was not that hard. And it went from this to this. So that's how I would build off of that pose. Go ahead and try that. So take that pose and just switch the feet. There you go. Open it up. Good. And now you have an entire new set of poses that you could bring to them. Parkour hamstring stretch. Hey, yeah, right? Good. And that looks like that's another great pose for you because your front double bicep is strong. All right. So from there, again, now we're looking 
Um, that, just, let's go ahead and stand up. Let's go ahead and relax for a second. <laughs> yeah, damn cow. Yeah. <laughs> I, never, I never knew those grandpas. How, how does that feel? Different, right? Yeah. That's the idea. Something different. Um, making you think outside of the box. Um, again, we're not going over specific principles today. We're looking at um, just, just overall free posing. Just getting comfortable moving because nobody else does poses like that. And the second they see it, they're like, you know, I don't... I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. And the only reason they don't feel comfortable doing it is because they don't practice it. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and take your front double bicep pose, which looks really good. And we're going to take it from the mirror, uh, and then turn you around and make sure you make it so you can't see yourself. And I want to see if there's any changes in what, what you look like. So go ahead and hit that pose facing the mirror so you can correct yourself. This is a regular front double bicep. And then let's have you turn it around. Uh -huh. And we'll hit the same pose. And hold it up. Good five seconds. Good, even better. You know what I'll have you do? Just close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Close Completely eyes. close them. Okay. Yeah. And now, start, yeah, start from scratch. Start from the front, front relaxed. Okay. Good, and see what happens now with no, no eyesight involved at all, how the pose looks. Good, now. Let's take that with your eyes closed and change that pose the same way we changed it earlier. Okay. Just by changing the angles of your arms. Go ahead and do it. Oh, on my feet? Both, either. Okay. Yeah. Good, and let's take that and transition you to a, to a position where your body is facing the left side of the room now. There you go. I don't know how to get there, but... You're getting there. There you go. You're getting there. Yeah. So, so there, there you were. Yeah, there you were. Back here. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Perfect. Good. Relax. You can open your eyes out. Perfect. Again, I just want you to get moving with no mirror, no visual representation of what you look like whatsoever. Because um, that's another key. Um, it's going to kind of lead off into a tangent we're going to go over in a minute as far as head positioning, hand positioning. But when you're on stage, as you recall, I'm sure uh, you didn't see any mirrors up there. No. Right. So what would it like being on stage when you were when you were up there? You're just, uh, you know, I almost imagine the mirror, like trying to imagine uh -huh. how I looked if, as if there was a mirror, but at the same time remembering the judges were kind of down there. Right. The crowd's somewhat a little bit lower. Right. Um, just trying to uh, just trying to pose my best without having that mirror to aid me. I guess. So it's a little different, right? It's different. different yeah. Practice in front of the mirror. You don't know what you look like. You just kind of just trying your best to think about how you look right. while you're doing this. Right. Exactly. And the problem with that, the problem is when people are are so used to looking in the mirror, is that um, the second the mirror gets taken away, they get that dumb look on their face. They get that lost. Um, they, they'll either look for people in the crowd or they'll, you know, they'll lose their, their focus. Um, and so what we do with that, instead of having to worry about you know, looking dumb or lost, uh, we just need to focus on the head positioning and the hand positioning. So that's what we'll talk about um, briefly. I want to take a look at the hand positioning because what happened, you hit a pose and then when you altered it, you opened up your hand. Okay. I've seen you hit that pose before, you're comfortable with it, okay, that was great. But what about your head positioning in that pose? How can we change it to make it better, right? Because you're looking at it, okay, it looks good, it looks good, it looks good, it looks good. But it doesn't look good if you're looking into the crowd like this. All of a sudden, it doesn't look good anymore. Now it's kind of scary. Kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. So, obviously what you would do is you'd probably want to look up to where your hand was going, right? So on that one, that's almost self-explanatory. You hit the pose, you open it up. And now you're looking where your hand's going. Okay, that's kind of a simple one. What if you were to do something like, um, let's get more creative, um, a pose from the side. And we'll say, we're looking at a side chest pose. Okay, I've got another strong one for you. Um, how would you, how would you find a way to look at something, make it almost uh, artistic, different, without looking into the crowd like you lost? Something like, I guess, look at my own chest or something? Right, exactly. Right, and that's perfect. Because what you did is you're looking at the muscle you're trying to display. 
And that's what will happen. If I'm going to flare my tricep out, if I do this and I'm not looking in the vicinity of that at all, people might wonder, why is he putting his hand out there? But the second I hit that and I look at it as if I'm admiring that muscle, <laughs> it changes. So when I look at it, I'm like, oh, okay, that looks good. And then I hit the bicep. And I'm still looking at that bicep. Okay, I'm not looking anywhere else. And when you hit in the back pose, I'd say it's slightly easier because you're not facing the crowd. But, you know, people are going to fall victim to the same mistakes over and over again. Um, drawing the attention to the muscle that you want them to focus on. So, if you're hitting a most muscular, it's going to change a little bit because now, you're not going to look at yourself, you know, in the most muscular. You're not going to hit the pose. But, well, I want them to look at my everything because that's the most muscular. I'm displaying everything, right? So, at that point, what do you do? Um, and that one, that's more of a rhetorical question. Um, just something to think about. Uh, just look no, that way. Yeah, there's no, there's no specific answer, but the idea behind that is you want to do something with your face, and that's why you, when you see me, when I'm on stage, personally, when I get a lot of my poses, uh, the facial expression is more relaxed. I try to stay more focused and relaxed instead of what you see nowadays, which that's, is just a... Yeah. You know, like because it, it's true, it's been said before, to a certain extent, the harder you hit a pose, the more it looks the same. So yeah. you could you could be making the worst facial expression you want because you're in that much pain because you've been dieting for 50 weeks and you're hitting this pose with everything you've got and it doesn't look any better than if you just hit it more relaxed. Right? But what would look better? Um, again, it's a rhetorical question. But if I'm doing the most muscular, I've been what I would do. I hit the pose most muscular. And maybe I would just look off into the distance. I have a picture like that when I'm looking off here. But I'm calm and I'm relaxed and I'm just looking. And, and it, it's not a loss there. It's something where I meant to look in that direction and the crowd is going to know it. The crowd doesn't see me kind of looking around wondering. The crowd is going to see me hit the pose and look off in that direction. And then from there, I'll make my transition. So it's just getting comfortable again. Um, with where your head is that you have to constantly think about every time. Where are you looking? What facial expression am I? You might be looking in the right place to make it look dramatic or make it look good, but then you might have the wrong expression as well, and all of a sudden you have uh, a weird look on your face. You know, or you, you smiled or laughed or something. You know, um, so there's so much to think about. And with that, on top of that, now, we got, now we're going to talk about your hands. Because that's going to play a big part in how you look. Um, more so in the creative pose and not so much in the mandatory when people hit the mandatories. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. You can't really, unless you're a female physique competitor, they do that. But for us, it's not really, you know, you hit the mandatory, that's fine, close fist, perfect. But the second you start to open them, um, we, 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 can get, we can get creative. There's more that can be done with your hands than people are doing nowadays. So they'll either keep them closed really tight or they'll open up a little bit. And then, of course, the most common one is the one we were displaying earlier, yeah. where you'll open it up, and then you have it here. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we want to get even more creative than that. All right. And that, again, is going to be determined by just what pose do we choose, and then what transitions do we use. And we're going to build off of that uh, and pick different hand positions that might go with that pose. But, for instance, uh, I do have a, I have a pose where I'm down here, and... Uh, I've turned, and this is up here. Okay, slightly different, just slightly different. The pose is similar to this, but slightly different. But the hand position, the hand position is different. That's the key to that. And the hand position is just different. It just opened up in a different way, balled up in a different way, um, turned in a different way. And that's what we're trying to get is just being comfortable, doing new things, trying new things. Um, your shoulders, I'm going to tell you this, you're tight. You are so big that you are tight. We're going to be stretching after this, but a lot of the being comfortable with the, with the transitions is, uh, is, is obviously flexibility. Uh, you want to be able to move comfortably. Um, I just want to go ahead and hit some mandatory stretches that I do at the end of just about every workout um, to help me with flexibility, which helps me with posing. So, okay. you, you stretch. I know you do. I've seen your videos. You hit the foam roller. You know, you're, you're on top of that. But... I want to make sure that everything that is involved in posing is going to be um, loose, not tight. Everything. So even on my leg days, I'll hit this 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 pose, this uh, stretching routine. And like I said, ideally, I'll do it 
um, um, 30, 30 minutes post workout. Okay. Nice calm, calm time to relax. So we'll stretch out the the um, quads, lay on your back, and this is a position that's most likely uncomfortable for most people already, right? But this would be a quad stretch, okay? Targeting at the quads, and what I'll do from there. Is I'll Should I be trying this or no? You know Should what? I just wait? You know, we can relax and wait. Okay. And then we'll give it a shot. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll give it a shot right after this. But um, dropping right into the quad stretch. And from there, I like actually loosening up my lower back. Because what's going to prevent me from making smooth transitions when I'm actually turning my body, turning my torso? It's going to be my lower back being tight, you know, my core being tight. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot more um, than just that. But if I'm trying to turn my torso and I have never once stretched any area of my back and actually twist at the waist, it's not going to look very good. It's not going to look very pretty. So this is what I do personally. Okay, I always grab the arm and I pull it, and I'll feel a stretch all the way up, almost to my lats, if I'm pulling hard enough. And it feels great. Um, so I'll come up from there. And what I like to do is I like to incorporate certain movements of yoga, um, certain downward dog positions, um, and back stretches, ab stretches. So I'll go from there and I'll do a cat stretch. I mean, it could be called, there's a lot of different names oh, yeah. for it, but you know, stretching out here. Um, I'll go for a pose here. And this is how, this, this, act, this position right here is how I created um, two poses uh, that I'm actually really uh, I'm really happy with. Uh, the poses are where my quad was displayed out here, but from this position. Um, also, the pose where my hamstring was displayed in a very similar position was from being in this position and realizing while I was stretching, looking in the mirror, that my chest and shoulders and my arms are displayed pretty well from the side, yeah. you know. So that's another thing that we're going to take into consideration, of course, is the, is the audience, what they're going to see. Because um, you might hit a, a good pose from here, yeah. but if you're here, it might not look good. You know, if you're here, it might not look good. So we've got to take that into consideration uh, along with everything else that we're taking into consideration. But let's go ahead and get your quads stretched out. Um, do you feel like you can do that with one leg? So if you put one leg down on the floor, um, and, oh, just, lean back on and it. just lean back on it. How do you feel with that? Um, Let's give it a shot. As long as we don't blow any kneecaps, the leg's going to go out to the side other way. So your foot. Which way? This one. The other foot. Yes. Like this? Yep. Same. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Good. And what you'll do is you'll lean back on that. Obviously, you're stretching the quads. And you'll lean back on that. And that, I mean, you actually look pretty flexible leaning back on it. And how does it feel? Is it tight? It's a little tight in, like, the ankle right here, but okay. the foot itself. Okay, but. and that's good that you're, we're, I mean, even the, the feet themselves, uh, the way we stretch, uh, you want to make sure that we... Let me just fall real quick. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. yeah. There, there you go. That's oh perfect. Does that yeah. feel good at all? Yeah, it's really painful. <laughs> Outside of all the pain in the quad. Now, how often do you stretch while you're in this painful position? Um, not like this. I do yoga maybe once every other week. Okay. So. It, now hold on before you go any further. Is that a load of bullshit or is that true? Because most people will say, "Yeah, I do it." And I, I mean, I, I say I do yoga. I haven't done a yoga class for a month or two, um, possibly even since my competition. But um, I love doing it and coming up to a comp, I do them. When's the last time you did a yoga class? Uh. Two weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago. Okay, so it was two weeks ago. Awesome. Let's get the other leg while we keep talking. Because uh, that's the thing, is that a lot of times people are guilty of tricking themselves into thinking they're doing things that they're not doing. And I say that because everyone says they... We all do it. Yeah, we all do it. We all do it. For stretching, for cardio. I did cardio. No, you did a five-minute warm-up and cool down. You know, but um, that's what... That's, that's how human body works. Everyone wants to... I mean, you just trick yourself into thinking you're doing more than you are. This stretch right here is, is uh, that leg doesn't look as tight, as, as loose as the other leg. Well, really, it's just, it feels like this, this, I don't know where to put my, my foot in a position. That oh, hurt, okay. You know? Well, if you can tuck it back, that'd be great. Can it get tucked back, or is your actual shins too tight? My shins are like pretty Like your anterior tibialis might be, yeah, pretty yeah, tight. Yeah, like, I can't well. really go like this too much. Okay. Like, 
turn it, it's pretty tight. But. Okay, so just again, something we'll be working on the flexibility. Huh. <laughs> nice, prop. You look That's comfortable. Never awkward. Yeah, you just him owned. Yeah. Uh, come on up. Let me show you what what the, and the, one of the biggest reasons. Um, for you, we're talking about foot flexibility. Um, yeah, it's pretty bad. It, yeah, when when I'm hitting yeah. the pose, um, because I mean, you'll you'll see bodybuilders do this. Like yeah, come down here, but no. But any further, they, their ankles can't handle it. Yeah, right. Their ankles can do it. But if I'm down here and that foot is still planted. That's flexibility, and that's gonna show, that's gonna display in your poses. If that foot can still be planted, and your leg is all the way out here, as opposed to it being so tight that you have to buckle at the knee, <laughs> right? So again, that's something that we're gonna be incorporating the flexing of the flexibility routine in, is to get the flexibility, allow your body to be held comfortably in different positions. That's gonna allow your pose to be completely unique, completely different, because nobody else is gonna be as loose as you. They're gonna be tight, they'll buckle. They'll try to hit a pose that's creative here, and they'll stop here, and they'll come back up. You'll be able to go all the way down. You'll be able to transition. You'll be able to move wherever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got the quad stretch. Next. Um, let's go ahead and just get the, uh, the back stretch where we were down here. Okay. Uh, the thing about this pose, take a look at me from the side. Yeah. Uh, pose, this, this stretch. Uh, you actually, what I want you to do once you get comfortable here, I want you to be up on your feet. So you okay. take a look at my thighs, not touching. Not touching All right? the ground. Not touching the ground. Okay. Not touching the ground. So you're up on your actual feet. There's pressure on the foot. There's pressure on the hand. Good. Perfect. And now from there, as you're stretching, go ahead and uh, deviate your shoulder position a little bit here. Um, so you have to press it. We're going to raise it. Good, good, good. Keep holding it. Good, go ahead and yeah, twist a little bit. Perfect. We'll take that straight to the knees and we'll finish off this posing with the arm getting stretched okay. right. through. Exactly. And can you tell me what that's stretching? How far? Do you want me to go? Yeah, right about well, that. Well, that's stretch my torso lat. Yeah, lat, post delts. Yeah. Exactly. So you're putting pressure on that arm and you're getting a good stretch right in the torso. So a lot of these stretches that we do in the beginning of the stretching routine deal with your torso, the, the mobility in the hip area, things like that. So ideally this stretching, you know, these were three or four different stretches, you know, they would incorporate the first five to eight minutes of the posing, um, the stretching routine. From there, we would obviously do more. We'll be saving that for next time I see you. Okay. But these are these are the kind of stretches that I would do on a daily basis, if possible. Now that's of course ideal, um, but humans aren't machines, right? So we can't do everything ideal. So I mean, if you could do it every other day, just post workout, you know, along with your your uh, myofascial release, you know, with your foam rolling, uh, that would be ideal because um, with all the muscle growth that you've had in this off season, you know, came a lot of a lot of yeah, a lot of strength um, and a lot of tightness that we want to make sure um, doesn't show up on stage. Now your biceps, I guarantee, are going to be tight, um, but from there you want. I mean, this almost looks like you're going to hyperextend and. If you have problems with your joints being hyperextended, you'd want to be careful with that. Okay. But uh, for this one, if you even if you you lean backwards while your hand is still planted, you know that's going to do it. So you're leaning forward here, but the second you stop leaning backwards, yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, all of, yeah, all of a sudden it becomes not just biceps, it becomes wrists, um, and that's a pretty a pretty important stretch for the arm for the arm flexibility. We'll drop down, we'll open up the hips a little bit. Because that's gonna be a big thing for you is opening up your hips. Can you get your butt on the floor? Um quad the tight. Don't really go too much more. Okay. So as low as you can go, my butt's on the floor, your butt will be on the floor come June. Okay. Real easy. But we'll while you're getting that stretch, just we'll stretch the tricep as well. So we'll throw the arm overhead and you'll grab that elbow. And you'll pull it. And when you pull it, Matt, I want you to also go ahead and 
turn your actual torso and tilt. Because that turns that stretch from just a tricep stretch. Now I've got my quads already being stretched, my tricep stretched, and now I'm stretching them with my lat and my lower back. And then we'll go ahead and switch sides on that. Every time I see you, okay. definitely. Let's go ahead and uh, get some. Some of the, and I mean, this might not be the same type of music you're, you're talking about, but like epic, you know, I feel like it's like, like the Roman Empire is taking over the world. You know, that's how I feel. And then when I see one man on stage, I'm like, that, it's hard to match the intensity of that epic taking over the world feel with uh, one person doing one, mandatory. One person doing mandatory. Exactly. Thank you. So what I'm saying is that would be a more advanced routine, and uh, it's going to be fun if we're creating one like that. Put it that way. I mean, it'd be, it'd be, like I said, it'd be harder, and I wouldn't suggest that for people who aren't comfortable. But um, I think we'll be able to make a, a really damn good routine. Um, okay. Be difficult, but you know, we got to make sure it. Like when you see someone like Moji, he posed really well at the dubstep, and dub, nobody will pose well at the dubstep. Sure. Nobody poses well at the dubstep because <laughs> they don't think about it. They just kind of pose to it. Yeah. And the intensity of dubstep is, is that where you have to be extremely powerful with your poses. Mm -hmm. And if not, then the, the intensity doesn't match. And then you kind of, you it does not do the, the voting justice. So, uh, I mean, if I look back personally into the voting things I've done, I had the Dirty Diana. I had the, thank you. I had the, the Bill Collins in the air the night, and that was a slower pace, um, which, which had a buildup, which is why I cut the song at that point. If you remember, the buildup led to the splits with the back, the ball bicep. Exactly. So it had a buildup, it had a climax, um, and that's powerful. you got to think about the, the The people in the audience are going to be hearing this on a loud speaker. It's going to be really loud. So you want to you wanna make them feel chills. You know, when they're watching the song, along with you posing to it. So I think that's going to be the toughest part for us is to create. Um, you know, you have the physique that go along with it. As long as we get the poses down, you know, and your, your transitions and everything comfortable enough, um, it'll, be, it'll be really big. Okay. Um, we have a lot of time. Yeah, yeah we that's, fine. That's, the, that's the good thing is that we're, we're, we're starting this now. Most people don't start it until you know a month before. That's a big problem. <laughs> one week after me. Yeah, well, yeah, one week after. That's what I like to do. That's what most people do. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at what, what do we get. Uh,